I was in the midst of a total transformation of my consciousness, my awareness, my perceptions. This energy just built up and built up and built up. So in the end, I'm kind of shaking. My life immediately became this extraordinary synchronistic journey. It got the most attention from the intelligence community because they knew it was real. They knew the science of consciousness is real. Everybody watching this program has those same levels of consciousness. This cult knows that. It wants to keep it from us, isolate that knowledge about reality in their hands and to keep it from us. To understand what is going on, we have to have some understanding of the nature of reality. Because if we don't, we will quite understandably dismiss things that are happening, but we can't perceive how they could happen. Example, you believe the world is actually solid. Our bodies are solid, that wall is solid and not a holographic, illusory physical. Not possible. Well, hold on. If you said to people, when you look through your eyes, can you see everything that exists in the space you're looking at? What are they going to say? They're going to say yes, but they can't. This reality is a holographic, digital holograms. That's what this physicality is. And what we're seeing now is more and more mainstream scientists who are uh, coming out and saying, actually, physicality is holographic. When you look in a mirror and see yourself and you see like one person looking back, that is not true. If you don't know that, then of course you're going to dismiss the very idea as impossible if you think the world is solid. It's not. It's dead simple. I'll just explain how reality works. We don't live in a world. We live in a band of frequency which our body brain decode into a reality, a holographic reality. We experience this reality through these, what I call biological computers, these, these bodies. Um, which allows us to experience a certain band of frequency that we call the world. And I'm always talking about the illusion of the label. Say to a guy, who are you? And so I'll say, oh, I'm Bill. I come from Blackburn and I drive a bus. That's their self-identity. No, no, those labels are not who you are. They are your experiences. It's this field of consciousness that is cosmic and universal. And that's what's inside everyone. It doesn't matter if it's a homeless person on the street or an MIT professor. If they are conscious and awake, the entirety of the cosmos is folded within them like a conscious quantum hologram. You have to understand what yourself is. Well, the question is, are we in the past? Or are we in the present? Or are we in the future at this very moment? And I bring that up not, not to make a joke, but to make a serious biological statement. From the way we live in our consciousness, can you distinguish a conscious manifestation versus a real manifestation? Did I just create something in my head or was that actually real what I just saw? Biologically, you'll never know the difference. We could all be sitting here right now, but we're actually, this is a long time ago. We're not even here right now. This isn't even the real moment. How do I know it's real? Well, I see it, and I feel it, and I smell it, and I touch it. I go, yeah, go to sleep. And in your dream state, your biology will be activated by your brain. Your sensory nervous system will experience what you've already done before. And to your sleep state, can you tell if it was a real state or a dream state? Not in your sleep. Well, then how do you know if the real state you're in right now is the real state or the dream state? The whole universe is actually folded within every single conscious being. It's like a quantum hologram. The five senses take waveform information, think Wi-Fi, turns it into electrical information, feeds it to the brain, and there are different parts of the brain that specialize in decoding the different senses, and the brain decodes that electrical information into holographic digital information. And that is what we experience as the world around us. It's not around us, it's inside us, all of us. Just as the internet is inside this computer and we look at it from afar.
biologically sensing in your dream or biologically sensing in real life? The answer is you can't tell. And that's the most exciting part because it really leaves open an understanding how we could go back and change the past or at the current moment we can change the future because is this the current moment or not? Therefore, infinity exists outside this narrow band of frequency, but we can't see it just as when you're tuned to a, a radio station or a television station, you only experience that frequency, that station, that uh, reality. We're dealing with civilizations where almost every aspect of how they appear in our time space would look like magic to us. And in the CIA, uh, this is actually called WSFM. Sounds like a radio station. It stands for Weird Science and Frickin' Magic. A spacecraft can be completely 3D like you see a solid aircraft. It can be partially in this dimension, but shifted mostly into another dimension. So I liken this to like when you're turning a dial on an old AM radio and you can move it across and you suddenly pick up Chicago and New York. At the same time, they're bleeding together, dimensional bleeding. And so often these ET craft will be partially in this dimension, but mostly out. And all that we will detect in this dimension might be an electronic signature, an orb or an object that appears and flashes in and out, a scintillation of light that then vanishes, or an object that comes in where it looks almost like a hologram of an ET being that will be standing amongst us but it's an electronically teleported version of that conscious being. Now what psychics are doing, and when we talk about psychics and the mediums, you've got to make sure you've got a good one, because there's lots of people out there claiming to be it on. They can expand their frequency range that they can connect with beyond the normal range of human frequency, and they can tap in to frequencies that are outside of the normal human range and you can pick up information from outside there that's not available here. And the other thing about knowing who you are, that we are not our name, we are not our race, we are not our sexuality, they're just experiences. We are consciousness, infinite awareness, having an experience and that consciousness can be as vast as or as tiny as we can be manipulated or we can be released in terms of the expanded nature to be. And I can tell you that when you step out of the perceptual confines of your name, your race, your sexuality, and you see them as experiences, very transitory brief experiences for your consciousness, then you step beyond the currency of control, fear. It's all illusion. It's all a manifestation of our perception of reality. So you want us to question everything, challenge everything. That's what we need to do. We need to all wake up as individuals. Instead of taking people's word for it, including mine, including anybody's, if you haven't got time to research it for yourself immediately, then put it into neutral. Don't believe it or disbelieve it, but don't react as if it's true, just put it in neutral until you've had time to check it out for yourself. And when you do, you'll realize invariably, as I did, that the official story, the official narratives are invariably either completely, most of the time, total lies or overwhelmingly misleading. And crucial, don't be intimidated into silence. If you silence yourself, eventually everything goes silent. I look at the world, I look at the suffering, I look at the people with illnesses they don't need to have, and people with emotional situations they don't need to have. I see people fighting over race and fighting over gender and fighting over culture and country. And we're all one. It's so sad, but this is what, what drives me on. Because in the end, it's information that will change this. Are you watching this now? Or did you watch this last year and just reviewing it now? Can't tell, can you? We can do more than just follow our noses into the next minute. We can rewrite the whole story again and again and again.